Isn't God good? Again. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> All the time. There you go. Uh, the morning of the big parade, a man and a little boy entered into a barber shop together. He said, give me the full treatment. The man said, I want to look like, I want to look good in the parade. After the man received a shave, a manicure, a haircut, he placed the boy in the chair and said, I'm going to go buy a new title right to the parade. I'll go back in a few minutes. And the boy's haircut was done. The man still hadn't returned. And the barber said, looks like your daddy forgot all about you. He said, that wasn't my daddy. <laughs> he said, he just walked up and took him by the hand and said, come on, son, you want to get a free haircut? <laughs> you got to think about it. <laughs> Throw the book away. And that was a new page, too. I, I know I've been on this, I've been on this a lot. Uh, let's see. Working here. There we go. I know I've been on this topic, and this is the fifth week of this topic. We've got one more week to go. And the reason I keep bringing this up is because we've had so many deaths, and, we've had, and, we, and with each death, you've got to remember this with each death, all, every, always, every time, anytime there's a death in the family, there is an interruption in the natural flow of things. And once that interruption of that natural flow is broken, there is a re, uh, reestablishment of the flow. And so while you're trying to reestablish the flow, that broken flow, while you're trying to reestablish it, it gets, it gets kind of crazy because you don't know exactly how to punch in where and what. And so you just have to, you have to let God do it, but as God is even you're not even sure where the flow is going to, which way the flow is supposed to be going now. So, so the church, like I said, has lost five. Uh, Jenny and Don, they've lost a lot all around, but especially, especially, uh, Don lost both his parents and Jenny lost the father. So again, the, the flow has Okay, so when the flow gets interrupted, it's so easy to try to put things back together, but a lot of times we put it back together wrong. So if you put it on your own, you're in trouble. You have to let God lead you. Is that so? I really that's why God told me about this focus. And there's ten things, and so we're doing two at a time. So next week will be the last week, and, and I keep going back. Verse 13. 
got your Bible, say amen. If you don't say amen, if you said amen, look right directly in front of you. There should be one in the pew. Philippians 13. Brethren, I count not myself to, to have apprehended, or I'm not, I'm not arrived yet. I'm not here yet. I'm not got as far as I need to go. I have, have apprehended, but it's one thing I do. Again, those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press. Somebody say press. press. That word press means literally to give it all you have and then some. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, for life. And I thank you, God, that although we have seemed to have uh, passed on many people to you in this uh, last few months, we know, God, that you already knew about this. You already prepared us for this, although we don't necessarily know, knew that at the time, but you judge your faithfulness by looking back. If we look back, we see how you prepared us for this. And I ask you right now, God, to help us to move forward to keep our focus where it needs to be. In the name of Jesus, you're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. There's nothing beyond you. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise you. The church said, Amen. Amen. Way down. Tell somebody the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Praise God. You can be seated. Now, now, I'm just going to kind of recap some of the stuff. Of course, remember I, I've been talking about it all, all for, for, for this is the fifth week. Has have your life ever been put in rebuild mode? You're thinking that things have been tore up, things have been destroyed, your life is never going to be the same. Well, you know what? Once your mind is expanded, it never goes back to where it was. Once your heart is expanded, it never goes back to where it was. Once your spirit is expanded, it never goes back to where it was. It always in growth. There's always something amazing that happens. So, so God has put us in the rebuild mode because we've lost all these people. And a lot of people had key jobs and they did key things and nothing more because of their age. If they couldn't necessarily do something physical, they at least could, could uh, give us advice and could lift us up and strengthen us. And, and I think our brother Billy, up until just a few months before he died, he cut the grass all the time. He cut around here now. Now Eddie took care of up in here, but, but Brother Billy took care of way on back here and around. You know, uh, even at ninety something years old, it's amazing to me the things that he did. So, but now it's all gone. So, so God uses the rebuild mode to draw us out of complacency and out of collapse, out of do nothing, and it draws out of us freshness and it it furthers us into God and in His kingdom. So. So our focus, how many of your focus has unlimited value? Satan don't want you to realize that when we've got our focus, we've got our focus on, we're looking at what we're doing. Peter stepped out of the boat, and as long as his focus was on Jesus, what did he do? He did the impossible. Man can't walk on water, especially in a storm. But because his focus was, was unbroken, he watched Jesus, he did the impossible. So of us here right now. And we see the things that we have to pick up and pick up the torch and move forward. We wonder, how are we going to do this? Keep your focus. Because once you get your focus on God, you can do the impossible. There's potential, there's power, and there's a position in an undivided focus. So, so here's the ten things that we've been talking about. We're going to go through the first one very fast. So you get, 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 get your... Uh, 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 Roller skates on. Here we go. I love it. Here we go. Number one, God called you, and He didn't call you to this place right now in your life so that He can drop you. Amen. Philippians 1 6, I'm convinced and I'm sure of this very thing that He who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of His return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. That's number one. That was our first week. Number two, he will build his church. That's our power. Matthew 16 and 18. I tell you, you are Peter. Greek means Petros, a large piece of rock. And on, and, and, uh, on this rock, a huge piece of rock, Petra, like Gibraltar, I will build my 
my church, and the gates of hell, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it, for, or, or be strong to its detriment, or hold out against it. So number one, he didn't call you this time in your life to let you go. And some of y'all have seen it just recently, how God came through for you, even when you didn't think you deserved it. How many? Amen? But he came through and showed you his power. Number two, he's building a church. It's not us. We don't, we, don't, we don't have to worry. Although we've lost all these people, we don't have to worry about how things are going to get done because if we keep our focus on God and what we're doing, the kingdom, not everything around us, not everything behind us, but the kingdom, God's kingdom, he will build his church. And we ain't got nothing to worry about it. And number three, okay, this is good stuff too. He did not promise to deliver you from the fire, but to walk with you through it. That's our protection. And that's our promise in his presence. Amen. He didn't promise to deliver you from it. Come on, somebody. He promised to walk through it with you. Now thus saith the Lord, he, uh, he created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not. Uh, let me just stop there for a minute. We talked about this the other week, but I didn't. One more time. He calls him Jacob and he calls him Israel. He says, I created thee, O Jacob. Everybody in here has been created. But I formed thee, O Israel. I created thee, but in order to get you where I can use you, I'm going to have to form you. I'm going to have to put you on the potter's wheel. I'm going to have to put some things in your life that you don't necessarily like. I'm going to put you on that potter's wheel. And when I get you that potter's wheel, you start spinning. You're going to think things are out of control. Now I realize that things not out of control. They're perfectly in his control, and he's reshaping you and molding you. When I pass you through the waters, I'll be with thee through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire. Thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And as I said, 43, 1 and 2. Now, now, Sister Dorothy, the week before she died, or, or, or a week after she died, she kept saying, 432, 432, 432. And we don't know what she meant. We really don't. But we got looking up and Don found a scripture 4, <clears throat> 43, uh, 4, and verse 432. But I just saw this, 43 and 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee through the rivers that shall not overflow thee. And thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall a flame kindle upon thee. That gave me an assurance that even in her state that she was going through, Amen. Number four, there's more store for your life and for your ministry. That's our potential. Hosea 10 and 4 says, break up the final ground in your heart. Now, in God so awesome. Here we go. Get, get ready. We're getting ready. We're getting close. We're getting close to the new stuff. All right. There it is. I didn't realize I didn't have it there. Here we go. Ready? When you obey the voice of God, you are unstoppable. Wow. Let it sink in. When you obey the voice of God, you are unstoppable. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void without producing any effect. It will not come back useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it, and it shall prosper in the thing which I have sent. Isaiah 55. Got 
make my Bible man. God didn't call you because your greatness, but he is. We slip and fall so many times because we we come up short. God, how can you use me? How is it even possible for you to use me? God, look at me. And God says, I didn't call you because, listen, just because of who you are, I called you because who you are. You're mine. I've got a reason for you. And whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, I know that I've got a reason for you. And he's still great. Even at times that you may feel that you're not. How many times have you seen God come through when you didn't feel like you were able, when you didn't deserve it? He came through. Amen? I love this. 2 Corinthians 4 says, Therefore we faint, therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we receive it, we faint not. Okay, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to wait away in this ministry. Why? Because we have this treasure in earthen vessels and in clay that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Wow. That's a power. I'm nothing but a lump of clay. And there's so, so many times I want to say, God, I don't think I'm up to this this morning. God, I don't think I'm up to this now. <laughs> and God say, dude, you might not be up to it, but I am. Why don't you trust in me? How many times have you just stood there and didn't even know what to say, and all of a sudden something miraculous happened, and you began to say things you didn't even know was going to come out of your mouth? Good things now. I also got another one to tell you, amen. All right, ask a shepherd boy, as he's still there with mighty Goliath, for 40 days and 40 nights, they were scared to death, and the biggest guy in the whole camp, Saul, would not go. Scared to death. And, and David comes up to him, bringing him lunch. And when he comes up, he says, Who is this guy that keeps, keeps <coughs> threatening y'all? Let me at him. And Saul said, Okay, go ahead. And he, I love it. He said, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies who you have defied. He says, he, looked, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He didn't look at the size of the opponent. He looked at his condition. He was an uncircumcised Philistine. He was not of the covenant, and David was. I think about it all the time when I go into prison, when I go into the hospitals, wherever I go. I remember, God, I, I'm not doing this on my own strength. But I did it on my own strength. I go home and get in the bed and cover my head. God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. Y'all say that. God's got this. Amen. And then think about as Joseph stood as prime minister over Egypt after being in prison for 10 years. Wow. In one day, in one day, I remember telling this to some guys. I don't tell every guy in prison the same thing all the time because I, I just don't feel like that's the way to do it. I, I let the Holy Ghost lead me into what to say. I remember one guy was telling me, telling me how, how, how he was looking at a whole bunch of time, and he said, dude, I'm not kidding. I did not do this. And I, of course, I hear that all the time, but, but he really, he just had me convinced. He hadn't done it. He said, there, there, even there's no, there's no evidence to even prove it. And he went, no, no, no. And he said, but they're talking about a lot of time, 20, 30 years. And, and, and I told him, I said, do, do you remember a story about Joseph? He was lied on because he was lied on. He was put in prison for a crime he didn't commit, and it was going to be a life sentence. He said, yeah, but tell me about it. And so I began to tell him about Joseph and how he, how he was doing good, but he got lied on. He got put in prison for sentence for rape. He going into prison, and, and uh, even at, at eight years, it seemed like they were going to get a chance because he began to interpret dreams for the butler and the baker, that they were, that the, 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 of course, the, 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 the baker died, but the, there's no, no offense. <laughs> the baker died, but the butler didn't. And so the butler is going to say, I'm going to tell him. I'll go tell him. And, and, and he forgets. And so is there two more years. So not only is he lied on in prison for something he did not do, but even when he got hope, the guy that was going to bring him hope forgot about him. And so now he's still in prison. 
but all in one day. One day. He went, and he had changed. Saul said he had changed on his legs. In one day, he went from chains and being on the ground to being prime minister of Egypt. The only person he had to answer to was Pharaoh. All in one day. And I told that guy that and he goes, wow, that is awesome. I said, well, you just believe that when you go in there. And I said, I'll hear some else come. I said, I want you to thank God for divine favor under your breath. I said, stand up straight. Do not slouch. Do, and do not, do not make any gestures like you want, like you bad to the bone. And I said, it's yes, sir, no, sir. And I said, and you just keep thanking God for divine favor. And you watch what happens. I said, you're going to be a Joseph. And when I, when, when I came back the next time, he said, dude, I'm just about ready to go. I said, where are you going? To prison? He said, no, they gave me time served. God's got this. God's got this. Amen. So, God didn't call you because of your greatness, but because of his. Amen. And, you know, I, I sit back and I think about Matthew. We were just talking about it this morning. How, how, <coughs> I said, I sure hope that if I ever find myself in that catastrophic of a situation, I could have the grace and the poise of Bethany. I mean, I go in there now, I go in the house, and, and of course, uh, the other day a car, a car passed me. And when the car passed me, it was some teenagers, when the car passed me, the person in the back turned around and looked at me, and even kind of waved. And I looked and said, Bethany? And for just that split second, she weren't dead. And I'm thinking, what is she doing in that car? And then I said, that's not Bethany. But, but, but still, you, you know, like God just keeps letting me get little glimpses that she's okay, everything's fine. You know, in that chair she's sitting all the time in the, in the dining room, we have her teddy bear that was sitting up here. That teddy bear's right there. And, and I walk in there and see that teddy bear and I see her urn over here. And, and I said, I know you're with God, girl. I know everything's okay. And in the living room in her other chair we have uh, Max. Y'all have ever seen Max, the, the monkey? The big soccer monkey? The life-size soccer monkey? Anybody ever seen it on Facebook? Linda's life size sock monkey named Max. We have Max sitting in her chair. Because uh, Beth and little Max too. So Max is sitting in that chair. And so I just decided that, that you know what? I'm not gonna, gonna, gonna I'm not gonna just keep talking about it was so bad, so bad, so bad, because I know it was bad. I'm gonna start saying, God, let me have the grace and voice that Bethany had. No matter what comes my way. Let me have it. And so so again, this is God did not call you because you were great. Say this. God did not call me because I'm great. God did not call me because I'm great. He called me because he is. He called me because he is. Amen. And then finally, getting knocked down in life is a given. Getting up and moving forward is a choice. I said the other day, God doesn't count how many times you get knocked down. He counts how many times you get up. Amen. The Bible says the righteous man get knocked down seven times. He can still get back up. He'll rise. Amen. So, so I said, here we go. This next week's going to be the finish of this. Here we go. Listen. The problem will not destroy you. This problem you're going through right now is not going to destroy you. Y'all say, say, say God's got this. God's got yes. I, I, you know, uh, uh, I've been giving away a bunch of these. Uh, Team Bethany and God's got this. But then I got the other one because... Because uh, cancer patients, it just says on one side, it says uh, God's got this other side. It says either way I win. And so uh, I've been giving them cancer patients and people have been going through things. And, and, and again, I look at it every day. There's two things I do every day. Don't think this is morbid. This is not morbid. This is healing. It's called repetitive therapy. You use it for, for, C, uh, for PTSD and for, and for CTSD. Every day, I look at Bethany's. I don't mean stare at it and cry and weep. I just look at it. So I know it's there. And I'll start out the day with this. I look at Bethany's obituary. Every day. I don't stop and read it all. 
I was talking and, and groping more and over. I just look at it and I say, she's gone to a better place. Thank you, God, that she's there with you. And every morning when we pray, my wife and I pray. We used to pray every morning. Tell me, Lord, how tell us, Lord, how to help Bethany, how to how to talk to the daughters, how to, how to lead her through this thing. We thank you for healing. Now every morning, every morning, now we say, thank you, God, that you've got Bethany with you and she's totally healed and she's got every need met. And so, again, is it sad? Yes, it's sad. But it's easier to get through it knowing that God's got this. Amen? God's got this. So now, this problem's not going to destroy you. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, 9 says, We are hedged in, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but not cramped or crooked, but, or crushed. We suffer embarrassments. Anybody ever suffering embarrassments? I just got to open my mouth and embarrass myself. Y'all need to ask me sometime. Just sometime, not now, but sometime, you know, in the last couple of weeks, like at Subway. I'll just, <laughs> to just, I'll tell you something later on. All right. All right. Uh, we suffer embarrassments and are perplexed and unable to find a way out, but not driven to despair. We are pursued, persecuted, and hard driven, but we're not to stand alone. We are struck down to the ground but never struck out and destroyed. God never said ever that you would not would not get hurt. How many ever been to the smashed waffling? Is it called smashed waffles in Greenville? We found this place out when Bethany was in the hospital. They made little waffles about that big around and they call it Smashed Waffles on Dixon Avenue. And, and they have all kinds of, I, mean, I got chicken and waffles there the other night. The little waffle sandwich, that big around with chicken in it. It was absolutely awesome. And when I was there, I saw, I was sitting looking at the menu, and I saw something called a hot shot. There's a big old shot glass here. And I looked at it and said, what's in the hot shot? They said, read it, read it. And it was two shots of espresso, and then it had ghost pepper syrup, and it had uh, cayenne pepper spread over the top of it. And they said, people like it. They try it. Y'all try it. I said, I think I want to try it too. And I said, my wife's on the way, but I'm going to tell you, she's going to say, dear, don't do that, or she's going to say, that's stupid. <laughs> I said, more like she's going to say, that's stupid. And so, we're at the, so she comes up, we're looking at the menu, and I go, look at that. And she goes, and I said, I want to try that. And she said, honey, that's stupid. <laughs> I was looking at all the guys, the guys I said, I told y'all what she'd say. They said, you're right. And so, Linda says, honey, why don't you just buy the cup and carry it home? I said, do you remember all these, the problem they were having with all these guys during wartime? They come over, they, some of the guys were never into service, or either they were in service, but never went overseas, and they got purple hearts and bronze stars and stuff like that, and they were wearing them, although they did not earn them, and that, that's called stolen valor, and that is against the law. She said, yeah, what's I got to do with you being stupid drinking this stuff? I said, if I bought that cup and set it up on that shelf and never tasted it, I'd be guilty of stolen valor. And she said, I don't know how y'all guys think. <laughs> if y'all want to see it, it's on her Facebook page. <laughs> She filmed me, and I took that thing down. I said, I'm ready for it. Two shots of, like I said, two shots of espresso, ghost pepper syrup, and, and cayenne pepper. And I think it had to be more than a shot glass. Because <laughs> I thought I poured it all down the first time, and I still had two more gulps. But when I did, it was like somebody had poured gas on my mouth and lit it on fire. <laughs>
is I'm not going to be guilty of stolen violence and standing myself to call things I've done and done nothing. I don't think you've been through been through nothing. God, let me just go ahead and 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 as we go through these things, I want you to be there. I want to be there holding your hand. I want you to show what to do, God, you be there. And no, no stolen valor. We're going to go through this. We're going to go through it together, God. And I believe that you're going to take me places that I never could have gone on my own. And, and I'm not going to be guilty of just being, being an armchair quarterback or just being a, you know, sitting back in a rocking chair and talking about how it used to be. No, now, now. These problems that you're going through, they will not kill you. They're not going to destroy you. God's got this. Amen. Amen. So watch this. Then we get ready to close. Brandon, get ready, bro. Here's our favorite ending. You have to keep your focus through the pain to get to those gains. Amen. Don't focus on the problems. Can you focus on the problems? All you're going to think about is the pain and the panic. You know, they, took, they, took, they did an experiment. They took buckets of ice, and they took people and stuck them in buckets of ice. Their feet barefooted stuck in buckets of ice, and they couldn't last no more than a couple of seconds. Their feet would start hurting and burning, and they'd have to cut them out. But if somebody was there encouraging them, they could stay there an unlimited amount of time because somebody was there saying, you can do it, you can do it, you got this. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, you know what? We don't need to focus on the problems. We need to focus on the promise, amen, and know that God's right there. And he's telling us, and our friends are telling us, don't you worry, you focus on the promise. And when you focus on the promise, there comes the power. And when God shows up with his power, you will find peace, amen. God's got this. God's got this. Focus. Focus. Okay, come on up here, Brandon. Focus. Y'all remember, remember, I love it on the Karate Kid. Focus, Daniel Son. Focus, Daniel Son. Focus, Daniel Son. If you keep your focus, no matter what comes your way, watch what God will do. Let's all stand. Everybody stand when nobody's looking around. Every eye, every head bowed, every eye closed.
and said, Pastor, I'm really having a hard time. I can't keep my focus because of all the things that's been happening. I just, every time I think we're going to slow down, here comes something else. And every time I think we're going to settle down, the smoke clears, before the smoke clears, here comes something else. And I just need help with my focus. I need God to help me concentrate on his promises versus the problem. I'm talking to you with nobody looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. But would you put the hand up? Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. I need to quit focusing on the problem. I got to focus on the promise. Let's all pray together. Lord, help me. Out loud, y'all. I'm going to hear y'all. Lord, help me to put my eyes on your promise versus the problem. I will acknowledge there is a problem. I will not hide it or sweep it under the rug. It is there. But your promise is greater than anything. And I trust you. And I give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Help me keep my focus in front of me looking at you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's funny how after Moses died, when Joshua was going to have to take over, he told Joshua, don't look beside you. Don't look behind you. Look straight ahead. And he said, meditate on my word day and night. I mean, don't let it out of your sight. You think about it. Think of what he said. Take his promise, because if you don't take his promise, you're going to be devastated by all the problems. you got to keep your focus on what God is doing in front of you. Amen? We're not going to have service Tuesday night because it's 4th of July week. No service Tuesday night. But we'll be back here on Sunday and the following Tuesday. There's two more weeks, one or two more weeks on the... Uh, uh, perfectionism and then we're going to go be and live now live strong and be a sign out on the road live now live strong it's going to be uh, at least eight weeks it's going to be beneficial if you're having problems with uh, PTSD, CTSD you're having problems with mourning, grief you're having problems with sadness of anything, depression you have problems with even, even some addictions it'll help you it will help you move forward that's not, that, this, this is not easy to say this because, because you're going to say, well, you said it was going to help and it didn't, but I, it's a promise. If you follow what, what you get ready to hear, if you follow it and do what's, what you're told, it's a, not a guarantee, but I promise you, it'll help you. Amen? Well, Larry, you dismiss us in prayer. I was just saying, Brother Burton, you dismiss us in prayer. Have you been there for so long and there? And there he is. Yes, sir, brother. Go ahead. Father, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you for your love and your blessings. We thank you for your word that we have heard today and the spirit that fills this place. Bless it, cover it, cover everyone in. Lead us, and may we always do 